Hi, my name's Sean Howell. I'm a GP in North Southwark, and I'm going to talk for a few minutes about the management of, of COVID during asthma. Um, everything I'm talking about today is available both on the Clinical Effectiveness website and the South East London COVID support website. We'll have a look at the Clinical, Effect Clinical Effectiveness website now um, so you can see what I'm talking about, um, and that should come up on the screen in a minute. But essentially, how we manage asthma um, is no different during COVID um, than it is at other times. And we would um, encourage you to use the Clinical Effectiveness Asthma Guidance, which is on the website and supported with a template on your system. The main difference is we're seeing patients remotely by telephone and often supported with a video, um, but still seeing them face to face when needed um, or if we're concerned. So if your patient um, presents with breathlessness during COVID, we suggest you look at the, um, the co asthma during COVID guidance, which is also on our website. Um, and I think we're about to click on that now, all running very smoothly. Um, and this just reminds us um, of how to distinguish between COVID presentations and asthma presentations. So if your asthma patient presents with breathlessness at the moment, could this be an exacerbation of their asthma? In which case it's likely to have um, a wheeze, um, variation in their peak flow and be responsive to a salbutamol inhaler. Or could this be a COVID presentation? In which case the breathlessness tends to come on several days into the illness and be associated with other COVID symptoms such as loss of taste and smell, new cough or fever. Or could you be looking at something else like a PE or pneumonia? And you may find the breathlessness, um, the clinical effectiveness breathlessness guidelines helpful. Also think about a combination of these diagnoses with perhaps COVID triggering an asthma attack and then a secondary pneumonia. Have a low threshold to see these patients face to face or refer to hospital if needed. Now I'm going to move on to asthma diagnosis. The main difference is we don't have spirometry at the moment. Um, and so without that, we're more dependent on using peak flow variation um, with a trial with a steroid inhaler over six to eight weeks and guidance for this is included on the South East London website. Moving on to the asthma review. Now we've missed a lot of asthma reviews over the last few months so we need to prioritise our patients for review. On your systems are clinical effectiveness top priority searches which for asthma is patients who are overusing their salbutamol. There are also some UCLP searches which are a little bit more sophisticated and include multimorbidity and ethnicity and divide your patients to high, medium and low risk. Once you've prioritised your patients for review and decided who's going to undertake that review, it's really helpful to gather some information ahead of the review. And both eConsult and AccuRx have excellent information gathering um, templates that you can send to your patients ahead of a review. Both of these now include the asthma control test, which is a new QOF re requirement as a validated test and replaces the RCP questions. It does take some time, so getting your patients to do that ahead of the review is really helpful. Now, the guidance we've got on the screen signposts you to some support, including Asthma UK. Um, and then remember to speak to Consultant Connect um, if you are worried if your patient's very unwell. And there's also the Children, Young People's um, um, Asthma Specialist Nurses who are hugely helpful in supporting children and their families who are struggling with managing their asthma. Always remember about flu, flu immunisations and don't forget about smoking cessation, both passive and active, signposting patients to support. I hope this has been helpful.